Hey everyone, welcome back to another Autodesk Fusion tutorial. Today we are going to be working with Gridfinity again. This is a file that I created in a different tutorial. Uh, I will link it into the in the description, but basically it is a parametric model of a Gridfinity bin. The only thing I did for this tutorial is I uh, deleted or I'm I'm going back on the timeline so we don't have any walls. So. This is basically just the base of the Gridfinity bins. I can come up here to the parameters tab and I can still change. I guess I can't do wall thickness or heights because that has to do with the walls, but I can change um, rows and columns and make this Gridfinity base any size we want. So uh, obviously the thumbnail shows that I'm going to be doing a tool cutout for Gridfinity and I just kind of want to show you the techniques that I use to accomplish that. So what I did, let me go ahead and insert. We're going to insert a JPEG and I'll explain it uh, once I insert it. So you're going to go up to insert canvas, insert from my computer, find your JPEG, hit open. And then you're going to place it on a surface. I'm just going to put it right on the top of my Goodfinity bin here. And then I'm just for now going to hit OK. So you can see what I did is I took an overhead photo of this meat thermometer and I put a tape measure next to it. And the trick with doing this, or at least to get as accurate as you can possibly get, is you don't want to put, so I did this with my iPhone, you don't want to put it on like just regular zoom, so like one, and then take a regular a photo of it. You want to be kind of a, as far away as the object as you can and then zoom in. So I put this on number three zoom on my iPhone, so it's zoomed in. The further away you are from the object and zoomed in on it, the flatter it is or the less distortion there is. So um, it's probably not super critical for something like that, but keep that in mind. If you have, if if you're using a phone to take a photo, you want to get this as, um, you know, um, what's the term with 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 the least amount of distortion, and you want this to be the the camera lens to be right above it, so you're you're face on, so you're perpendicular with this face. So that's what I did, and so the reason I put the tape measure in here is because now we can um, take this photo and calibrate it so we we have the exact size of it. So let me just go back to the top view here. I'm going to switch my camera to orthographic just to make sure we're seeing a 2D image here and we're not 3D once we start building this body. Um, okay, so here's your canvas folder. This is where all your JPEGs are stored. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit calibrate and I don't really love how fusion does this feature but I guess I also don't know how they could do it better it seems like this isn't super accurate but basically you can see my crosshairs here I'm gonna click on a point and it seems like this left edge is a little easier to see so I'm gonna do left edge and left edge so I'm gonna click on the top of this left edge and then I'm gonna click on the top of this left edge. And right now it's at 4.3. I'm gonna put that as 10 millimeters because that's what the tape measure says. Obviously, if you only have one in inches, you could click on this and do 25.4, you know, convert your millimeters to inches. Or if you have calipers, you could measure on the calipers like how big the screen is. And then when you import this JPEG, you can do the calibration and just click this side and this side and then type in how wide that screen is. There's lots of ways, but but now we know that this picture is to scale. And so let's turn our Gridfinity base back on. And I kind of want to straighten this out and line it up. So let's let's go into the photo and this time I'm going to hit edit. And now we can move it around. So if we bring this up, you can see my top of my tool is kind of crooked with the Gridfinity uh, base here. So I'm going to rotate. I'm just going to click on the handle for rotate. And let's do like one degree. That's going the wrong way. So I'm going to type in negative one. And that looks decent. But I'm going to maybe go 
negative 0.9. And, and you can make this as perfect as you want, but that looks pretty good to me. So you can see here's my horizontal line for grid infinity. And then there's my horizontal line for the tool. And that looks pretty uh, parallel. So let's call that good. I'm going to hit OK. OK, so now that we have this parallel, let's increase the size of our gridfinity base. So I'm going to go up to my parameters here. Oh, I don't remember which one's which. Let's just do like five. And five seems too big. You can see it's really long compared to this. So I think we can probably go down to four and then hit OK. So let's move this photo again. So I'm just going to edit canvas and I'm just going to move this around. Now you can, again, you could create sketches to use as references and try to get this lined up perfectly center. I'm not going to go through that much trouble for this tutorial. I'm just going to see what looks good. And I think that looks pretty good. So hit okay. Okay. So I've got the size of my gridfinity base uh, figured out. I've got my photo to scale. And now we are going to trace around this edge. I generally like to do this kind of work in um, Adobe Illustrator because I'm much more proficient in Illustrator. Uh, actually, I've been using Illustrator and Photoshop a lot longer than I have um, Fusion. But Fusion, it's actually really easy to do. And for something this simple, I probably wouldn't go into Illustrator. But for more complicated tracings and stuff, I, I might. So let's create a sketch. Let's just turn off the canvas for now. I'm going to create a sketch right on the surface of this Gridfinity. So I'm going to click that surface. Let's turn the canvas back on. And we're going to just start tracing around this. Now, for an object like this, what I like to do is kind of break it apart. Now, you know, it, this is an odd shape, but you can kind of break it into straight lines and then curves. So what I'm going to do is hit L on my keyboard for the line tool, and I'm just going to draw all of the straight lines. So, you know, the straight line starts maybe about here. Let's just draw that straight line. You can zoom all the way in if you want to try to get this perfect. It's probably not that big a deal for this model. Hit my check mark. Do the same thing for the rest of it. Okay, so I have my straight lines. And now we're going to do these curves. And since it's usually not up here in the bar. A lot of people will go right to this fit point spline, and you can do that. Fit point spline will work, but there's another type of spline tool that will work way better for, for these kind of curves. So what we're going to do is hit create spline and control point spline. And you have to kind of practice with this. It's what you're going to do. Let's just start on this easy curve first. You're going to start on a known point and it kind of looks like I'm a little off with this point. This could be moved a little bit. For, for now, we'll just keep it. Um, I'm going to click on this point and I'm just going to click in the middle. Since this is such just a small curve, I'm just going to do one point on this. So I'm going to go right in the middle and then draw another curve and then draw. I'm sorry, you don't draw. You click and then move your mouse to this and then we can hit the green check mark. Now the cool thing about this, you hit escape on the keyboard to get out of the tool so you're not gonna draw anything else. And you can take this point, click on it, and move it. And you can move it out, you can move it left, right, and you can get it to line up perfectly with your drawing. And there you go, it's literally as easy as that. Now this one's a little bigger curve, so I might do more points. So let's go to create, spline control point spline i'm going to click here let's let's just do a few spots we'll do three maybe in the middle and we'll do another one here and do the check mark and then it's again just a matter of moving these around see how i'm in still in the tool here so i'm going to hit escape so i'm going back to my regular mouse and i'm going to click and move this out And you can move each one. And again, you can just 
move these around until you're happy with what you're seeing. And I mean, it's literally as easy as that. Now, if you want to make this um, tangent, I guess I don't know if I can, let's see if we can do this. Um, I'm going to just see what this does. You, I, I would like this curve right here to go be tangent with this. Um, so I'm going to just click this. And it does kind of work. Let's hit escape. Now I can probably only move this. Oh, uh, now it's going to move that whole line. So you can just move this line still. Anyways, you get the idea. You can just kind of, now that kind of screwed up here. I'm just going to get this perfect. One more. And you could do the same thing from up here. I'm going to actually move this line up a little bit which is probably going to screw this one up a little bit. Okay, you get the idea. You can make this as perfect as you want. I'm probably spending too much time on this. Now, there's other methods you can do. Now, the, I think I think this method is probably the easiest, but there's also an automatic option that sometimes does work, and that's the blend curve. And basically, you can see this little thumbnail. It, it takes two lines and tries to blend the curve to match. So I can choose this line and this line, and it'll kind of guess what that curve should look like. And the cool thing about this method is that it does give you the tangent on both of these. Now, you can still actually change this a little bit with these handles. I can, I can bring this in, which controls that curve, but then also you can see what it's doing here, throws all these lines off. So I'm gonna undo that, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just hit Control Z and back out of that. And we'll just we'll just go back to our other method. One way around that, you could actually right click and do fix. And now this line can't be moved. So if you did wanna do this blend curve, and actually, you know what? Let me right click here and fix this line. So now if you did this blend curve and tried to change this, those straight lines can't move now because we fixed them. So if you did want to do this easy method, now you can kind of have some control. And that actually looks pretty good. Not as good as the other way, but I'll just leave it like that. So let's go back to control point spline. We will click here. Let's do just a center one. And click here. Hit escape. And we'll just make this... Tell you what, let's let's try something here. Let's do let's do this is tangent to this, and it's also tangent to this. And then let's see if we can how much we can change that. So now again it's moving this line. So I'm gonna undo that. Probably being a little tell you what, I, I'm gonna get this looking nice. I'm gonna fix that again. It's green, so now it can't be moved. And now I'm gonna make this tangent with this. Oh, now it's giving me errors, okay. I'm making this way too complicated. You guys get it. Okay, let's finish sketch. So let's turn canvas off. And now we have our outline. Now we're gonna extrude this up here. So I'm, we, I was going to hit E extrude and extrude this up. The problem is we made this outline completely perfect, right? So there's no clearance here for the tool. Now you could do your extrusion and then come in here and do a press pull and, and make it larger. Or I'm going to hit cancel there. You could get back into this sketch and do an offset. And so you hit the offset tool, click on your line, and now it's going to draw an offset of your original line and we'll do maybe like oh i don't even know let's do 1.5 millimeters all the way around now well, let's bump it up to two maybe i think that's probably fine so let's hit okay okay so the one other measurement we'll need is the thickness of our meat thermometer or screwdriver or wrench or whatever you're trying to draw around. 
Um, I think I think mine was 18 millimeters. So I'm not going to go quite that high. I'm just going to hit E for extrude, and we'll go we'll go 15 millimeters, and hit OK. And now one thing, and we could have done this on that previous sketch. Actually, I'll tell you what, we'll just draw another sketch. Is a circle for like a finger to grab underneath it. So I'm just going to click on this surface, hit sketch. We're going to do C for circle. And let's just do like right there. It doesn't matter the size. I'll dimension this and we'll do, we'll do 30. Finish sketch. Now we can take this, hit E for extrude. Now I'm trying to click on the bottom of this tool but since my sketch is turned on it's wanting me to hit uh, uh select the, the sketch so i can either click and hold and then move down to the face or you have to shut your you can you can make your sketch not visible to to get that and then hit enter and there is our little finger hole that <laughs> sounds dirty to say okay let's chamfer some edges we'll just do a one millimeter chamfer on all of this to smooth those edges and there you go now it looks like this probably could have got moved over a little bit there's not a ton of space here and there's some space here so you know you can you can move this around and get it as perfect as you can for this tutorial i'm not going to worry about that so i will let's go up to the top view Let's turn our canvas back on and that's how it's going to look. So there's my, there's my tool. I might've put a little too much space around this. Um, I may mess with this a little bit more and get it exactly how I want it, but you basically get the gist of what I'm doing. So I'm going to, I'm going to mess with these tolerances a little bit and then I'm going to print it and then I'll show you how it fits. All right. Here is the finished part right off the printer. Um, some things I did off camera is I added thermometer to the bottom. That I just did, you just add a sketch to this plane or this surface, and then you go to your text tool and write out your text, and then you just extrude it down. I extruded it down two layers, so 0.4 millimeters. Um, I also added a little bit larger chamfer on the little uh, finger hole here. And I changed the clearance all the way around the part to 0.8. And I actually could have went less. I think you could probably do like 0.4 or even like 0.3 or 2 if you really want a tight fit. But this fits in nice and perfect. There's still some wiggle room just because my clearances are are a little much. But honestly, it's grid finity, so it's not going anywhere. It's, it's going to be flat like this. So, um, yeah, that worked out. That worked out really well. So. That is how you add a little tool cutout to Grifinity. Hopefully this was useful to someone.